Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about Utah Copper's central power plant in Magna. So stay tuned. Kennecott Central Power Plant, Magna, Utah. The first power plant was built in 1906. It was a steam generating plant generating 8.5 megawatts. It supplied power to the Magna Mill and the Bingham Mine. After the 1910 merge to the Boston Consolidated Mill, its name will change to Arthur Mill. The first power plant was located below the Magna Mill complex. This image labeled Utah Copper Company Power Plant at Garfield. The plant had two smokestacks. They were recognizable by their flared tops. September 1912, Utah Copper Company announced that it would convert its mills and being a mine from steam power to electric power, purchasing the electricity from Telluride Power Company. The Telluride Power Company was established in 1895 by the Nunn Brothers. Their first plant was built in Provo Canyon, now Nunn's Park. Here are some images of that first hydroelectric power plant. It went online 1897. It generated 44,000 volts. The plant supplied power for the Merker Mining District, some 32 miles away. This was the first high-voltage, long-distance, alternating power system in the world. The power plant will move down to the mouth of Provo Canyon, the Olmstead Electric Power Plant. Faye DeVoe, they called him Fred Homestead, was a Colorado native. He graduated from the University of Michigan in engineering. He designed the new generating station and a large wooden flume that supplied the water. He died of tuberculosis before the project was completed. Subsequently, the plant was named after him. The Homestead plant will replace the Nun station in 1904. Here's some wonderful image of the Homestead hydroelectric power plant. But I think the electric power came from the Jordan Narrow Station, what the Telluride Power Company purchased in 1906 for $17,000. Then it was sold to Utah Power and Light in 1913. You might want to check out my video on the Utah Power and Light substation at Bingham. Here's some pictures of the Jordan Narrow's hydroelectric power station. Back to Magna's power plant. Utah Copper will close the Magna power plant in 1912, but keep it intact in case of an emergency. This August 27, 1936 area of view shows the old power plant. Note the flared smokestacks and the Magna mill above it. The demand for power increased at the mine in the 1920s. Steam power was being replaced with electricity. The large shovels and trains were being converted to electric power. Utah Power and Light supplied the power. The Mining Congress Journal, September 1927, stated that, in September 1927, all electric power used at Bingham was coming from the Utah Power and Light Company. Construction started on the new central power plant February 1942. It went into service November 1944. 
In 1947, Central Power Station was expanded to 110 megawatts. August 1947, two new 25 megawatt generators and a new boiler were added to the Central Power Station in Magna. The original plans for the power station had included these generators when the plant was first started in 1942, but the wartime shortages forced design to be cut back. The expansion was reported as costing $3 million. It expanded the plant to 110 megawatts. December 19, 1958, a $16 million expansion project took place at the Central Power Plant. The project included the installation of a 75,000 kilowatt turbine generator, new boiler, cooling towers, electric switch equipment, a 20-foot extension to the present building, and other related work. It will boost the total output of the power plant from its present 100,000 kilowatt capacity to 175,000 kilowatts. The power station used natural gas with the coal as a standby. In 1983, Kennecott closed its 175 megawatt coal-fired generating station because of financial losses. A personal note, in 1984, I was laid off, as was most of the employees that year. I went back to school, part of a retraining program. Our teacher was an instrumentation engineer working on the power plant, computerizing the plant. Part of our class, we toured the central power plant. In the 1980s, Kennecott changed hands several times, ending with the purchase by Rio Tinto in 1989, becoming Rio Tinto Kennecott. 2000, December 2010, Rio Tinto proposed to replace the three coal-fired boilers at the Magna Power Plant with the single natural gas fire turbine and generator. The largest coal-fired boiler, Unit 4, will remain in use to give the power an alternative source of fuel. Unit number four was completed in 1959 and has always been capable of being fired by either natural gas or coal. The improved power plant is needed to provide additional power for the planned quarter stone project at Bingham Mine. October 27, 2016, the Utah Public Service Commission today approved a multi-year contract between Rio Tinto Kennecott and Rocky Mountain Power. This was to provide savings and stability for the mining company and the energy provided customers. As part of the agreement, Rio Tinto Kennecott will shut down three of its coal-burning units more than one year ahead of schedule after negotiating a contract to continue receiving electricity from Rocky Mountain Power. 2019, the central power plant will close. Since then, the plant has been being demolished by IDR, Integrated Demolition and Remediation. They have been removing the four 250-foot stacks, the windscreens, they had asbestos coating, and they have been selling the assets like valves, motors, pumps, transformers, etc. As of 2025, the main building still remains. So that's Kennecott Central Power Plant.